Hello, I'm Barno from Uzbekistan. I've been living in Japan for four and a half years. I decided to write to you to suggest a new video idea. Many Muslims are concerned what it is like to live in Japan, whether Japan is a Muslim-friendly country and how Muslims are treated here. Hi Barno, perhaps you could tell me more about what the video would be about. What would you say? What would you show? Cheers, Greg. In my opinion, the video should include three important points. First, Japanese people's attitude towards Islam and Muslims. Second, halal food in Japan. Third, working in a Japanese company as a practicing Muslim. Hi Barno, I know it's been a while. I hope you're still game for making a video together. I have time to shoot this month if you and your husband have availability. Cheers, Greg. Good morning. Hey, good morning, hello. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> so Barno, um, you wrote an email to me, or many emails. <laughs> you said, if you know about Islam, you're probably familiar with its requirements and restrictions. But before meeting you, I didn't really know anything. Um, so what are the things about Japan that would make uh, or provide challenges for Muslims living here or visiting here? Okay, first uh, talking about some of the basic requirements. It's uh, praying five times. Uh, visiting mosque um, every Friday, eating halal food, not drinking alcohol, wearing hijab for females. And in Japan, many of these basic points are quite challenging. So, what are you making? I'm making uh, a meal, but it's not... I, it doesn't have a name. <laughs> it's just a bunch of vegetables and I fry them all together. But it's not traditional Uzbek meal. <laughs> So this is a, is it a vegetarian meal or is there a meat in it too or? You can make it vegetarian as well. Like sometimes I cook it without meat, but today I'm going to use chicken. And where did you get the chicken from then? Chicken I got from Gyomu. We always buy from Gyomu because it has um, certified uh, halal meat. You can see. And are you not going to introduce me to your husband? Yeah, Sherzad. <laughs> yes, I've been behind the camera the whole time. I am Sherzad. I'm also from Uzbekistan. I've been living in Japan for the past six years as a Muslim. Okay, and Sherzad, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, for a living, we also do YouTube. Uh, we have a channel. Uh, she does YouTube, I do YouTube. That's uh, what we do for a living. It's quite fun. Well, halal, uh, it's permissible, it means. So halal food means food that you can eat. You are permitted to eat. Uh, by the way, uh, we're trying to consume uh, less meat for the past three years because that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. Not anything except pork is halal. People believe if you can eat any meat except pork. But any animal that haven't been slaughtered or that have been slaughtered for other than God, it would mean even a chicken, sheep, beef, they would all be non-halal if they hadn't been killed in the proper manner. Fish is generally what saves us in most situations. So whenever we cannot find halal food, we usually go to eating fish. So but anything that is vegetarian then would be halal? Would be halal, halal. yes. Okay, so that's that's another safe to... area that saves us usually. Almost all meals in Uzbekistan are in one pot, like you cook in one. So much food. <laughs> so much food. So usually you just have your one dish? Yes. Uh, one dish and, and salad. salad. If you go and tell Uzbek people, give me your food, they will give you this. What is that called? Osh. They Osh. Call. Yes. You should eat this as... <laughs> yeah. So it's spoon only. Hmm? The primary problem that we face as a Muslim is to find halal food because Japan is largely a non-Muslim country. If I want to eat out, I look for halal restaurants. So sometimes it's quite inconvenient. Halal foods, where there is halal restaurants, Muslim owners, uh, pork-free restaurants with prayer space. So what kind of place is this? This place offers ramen, which is traditional Japanese food. And you can taste it here uh, without worrying about its ingredients because it's halal certified. And uh, also on the second floor, they have prayer room. This corner is a special place for praying. Oh, it's, really it's very tiny, but better than nothing. Okay, so this place is closed. 
In Japan, uh, I need to check it all the time. The ingredients, for example, if I want to buy ready food from convenience store or some supermarkets, I need to go through the ingredients. Uh, we are now in Shinokuba station. A very close station is just 25 meters from here. And there are a lot of halal shops. And let's try to enter this one. Uh, excuse me, we are making a video about halal shops in Japan. Is it okay to film inside the shop? This one, oh. this one, that was the restaurant, all ours. Mine. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this is one of the shops where you can find a lot of halal products. There is halal meat as well. It says it's from Brazil. So most of the halal stuff is from Brazil? You're yeah. saying the meats? Yes, halal sign. Also a lot of foreigners come here to shop for uh, different spices that you cannot find in Japanese stores. Different kinds of sauces that also can be not halal in uh, typical Japanese supermarkets if you buy. Because they, they might have alcohol or shortenings. But here you don't have to worry about that. Instant noodle, also halal. Bar no safe. Yeah. I always check for sign. If they don't have sign, I ask the owner or someone who's working there whether it's halal or not. And some say, oh, it's chicken, it's halal. I don't trust them <laughs> because some Muslims think that if it's chicken, if as long as it's not pork, it's halal. So I try to find that sign and eat where I can find. <laughs> I wanted to study in an international university and when I was searching for universities, I found one in Japan and that happened to be Ritsumikan Asia Pacific University. And because of scholarship, I was able to come here. Because I wanted to study in Japan uh, at a university, it had nothing to do with religion. I came here and I loved the country so much that after graduation, I just decided to stay here and it's become more like my own country to me. Where if I go back to Uzbekistan, uh, the country where I come from, I would be missing Japan a lot. It is obligatory for all Muslims to pray five times a day. Before prayer, every Muslim needs to uh, cleanse themselves and purify their bodies. Uh, that's what we call ablution. The most basics of ablution are that you must wash your hands, you must wash your face and you must, you must wash your feet before you pray and make sure that you are clean to pray. Now I am allowed to pray. So there's a tradition from uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, where he says, every time you wash your hands, every spill, every drop of water uh, will wash your sins. Once you do ablution, once you clean your body, as long as you don't uh, go to uh, the bathroom, it means you still have evolution, wudu. So it shows the direction of the Kaaba, the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. The cube-shaped uh, structure uh, towards which every Muslim uh, faces while they're praying. And it says the prayer for Asr. The time until the Asr prayer is in uh, 50 seconds now. In most Muslim houses, there's usually a separate space for people to make ablution before the prayer. When I'm at home, I don't uh, wear hijab and I'm usually in, not in modest clothes. So when I pray, I use this uh, clothes for praying and it's very convenient to just uh, put on quickly. It's a big, big size for me, but this one is scarf. And then it covers my whole body. Then I use the cap, the Muslim cap. We Muslims always wear a cap on our head, uh, just like the Jews do before praying.
So this is the uh, sunnah. Mm -hmm. It's not actually mandatory to pray. This uh, it's not ordered directly from God, but uh, the f what we prayed so far uh, is half the prayer. But it's sunnah because uh, we do it because the Prophet peace be upon him did it every time before praying. Uh, he prayed even more. Uh, what we are going to pray together now is called fard. It's the obligatory and mandatory uh, prayer that God directly ordered us in the Quran. And that's why when people pray far together, they do it in a group. More like uh, the hands and the movements of the body will be in a unison. Allah Akbar. So, uh, the file, which is directly ordered from God, is finished. Yeah, the symbolic meaning of uh, prostration, and which we call sajda, doing sajda, is that you submit to the will of God. And the symbolic meaning of leaving the prayer, which is to give greetings to both sides, is uh, there is an understanding in Islam that on both shoulders, there is uh, two angels who record, who are responsible for recording your actions during your life. And the inside uh, of the heart, the intentions will be judged by God. So you're saying that um, you don't actually need the prayer rug if it's clean. Yes. So why are you using the prayer rug? You actually don't need this prayer rug. You can pray wherever uh, it's clean to pray. So mm, we use this just because it's, it has become a habit to us. I mean, from an Islamic perspective, it would be quite incomprehensible to, to have no time for prayer because time is something that you give as a matter of priority. There's nothing else that's more uh, beloved to God than those prayers. So they have a uh, number one priority. Most people have the idea that uh, a prayer must be prayed at a certain time, but it's more about the movement of the sun and the moon. Uh, it's more of an astronomical phenomenon so when the sun comes to a certain uh, point, it's time uh, that you must pray one prayer, but it doesn't mean that you must pray it at that moment. For example, if the time for what we call uh, Duhar comes at one, it can last all the way uh, until five or four, depending on the season. So you have three or four hours uh, to be able to catch that prayer. Uh, in a place like Japan, when it's time to pray the midday prayer, we always struggle to find a place and we end up praying uh, on the street. We always carry with ourselves a prayer rug, we put it and we pray on top of it. But it's also good news that increasingly Japan uh, is recognizing this need that Muslims have, so they're facilitating. Contrary to the expectations of many, there are mosques in Japan. This looks a very regular building, but if you uh, go inside, there is a mosque for Muslim people to pray. And here you can see masjid, which means mosque, on the fourth floor. Where are we? On other floors, there are different salons and other kinds of businesses. But you can enter this room. It's a praying room. OK. So it's not kind of mosque like you usually see because mosques usually have uh, special architecture, design, but this is just a building and it's used to pray. So we can also call it mosque. I feel very safe. Like whenever I see this kind of places, I just enter and pray. I don't look for people to ask permission because this place is for praying. So I don't have to worry. I can just enter and pray.
So no one is here right now? Yeah, no one is here. You get more rewards if you pray as a group. So I assume that they all come at a certain time. That's why right now there is no one here. Uh, have you heard about good deeds? Like people try to do good deeds. Oh, good deeds, deeds. yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, the more good deeds you do, the better for you, right? And there are also some uh, small actions that you may think that's not something good that you are doing. But for example, smiling to another person is also uh, one uh, way of good deeds. For not smiling is okay, but if you smile, you it's good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So then you get lots of points then. Yeah, I always smile. <laughs> ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض زحرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإذا ربك فرغب When uh, people are praying for example just like I did now yeah. we are reading the verses of the Quran Oh, you memorize just, just the recitation of it, yes is it always the same, like for the same time of day? No, you can choose any. What happens it's if you can't remember? There's no way you can't remember the, at least one, right? I don't know. I forget no, things all the time. You no, you can memorize before praying. Like oh. Before you start praying, first you learn those. Yeah, yeah. Imagine forgetting something you recite five times a day. <laughs> what smells nice? Then you use something? You, have, you, to you have to use what? Uh, Perfume. Yeah, perfume. Really? For coming to the mosque. I did not know that. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not a strict it's not rule, a rule. But it's not an obligation, but you you're encouraged. Rewards. It's like, just like smiling. Oh, I did not know that. Just like smiling. You have to you, wear perfume. Yeah, if you wear perfume, you'll get more. Reward. So it. <laughs> 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 no, it's. It doesn't so, have to be some, you know, sort of perfume, but if. You must, you, you, you must smell nice, yes. a good. So, because <laughs> you are always standing in line next to the person, right? Next yeah, to yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. And when uh, the mosques are so crowded, it's like I'm always standing like this in, in the mosque. On Friday prayers, when we go, we stand like this. Yeah. Right? There is no, not enough space. And when people are touching each other this close, you have to smell good. I see. And we use this usually. Oh, so this is special. This is called musk. This is musk. what Muslims use. Yeah. B1, F. Yeah. We need to go to the basement. Yeah. Akihabara is one of the famous um, places in Tokyo. A lot of tourists come here for shopping, especially electronics are very popular. There are so many stores and when they come here, it's very good to have such a prayer room because it's quite inconvenient to pray in the streets. It's a very crowded part of Tokyo. So I'm very happy that they have a special place for Muslims to pray. So now there is no one here. Two people can pray. Oh, there are more prayer marts. I think three people can fit. In some pray praying places or masjids, you can see this kind of clothes. This is for ladies. You need to have a long dress or something which is not showing your body shape. So you need to be in a modest clothes when praying. Uh, Muslims all have to go uh, to the mosque. On Fridays, that's not something optional, that's an obligatory act of prayer. Uh, welcome to the biggest mosque in Japan, in Tokyo, which is the Turkish Jami Mosque. Uh, in every mosque there is a tower. Uh, the purpose of which is to call people to prayer before the prayer. Does that happen here as well? Do they have uh, here, no, it's, this is just to show the tradition. So this is uh, the corner where they have put special uh, books for those who love reading. They can come. 
Right. So the, f the first book that Muslims regard as the highest is the Quran, and then these collections of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And here we have the halal shop inside the mosque and restroom where, they, uh, where Muslims can cleanse themselves before the prayer. All the products in this market you can see are branded uh, halal. Okay, this is the halal sign. This is an uh, import from Turkey. From whereas, Turkey? yes, okay. whereas this one is Japanese uh, Wagyu, halal Wagyu. But how would a uh, honey not be halal? I don't know. Because I told you, in Malaysia, in most Muslim countries, they brand everything, even water with halal sign. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, halal but even sign. this one, there is also a halal sign. Just, just to make people feel like yes, safe, Yes, yes, yes. But it would exactly. never... Exactly. Yeah. It would never be not halal. Yeah. This prayer rug is very interesting in that it, it's foldable, and it easily fits into your pocket, and it shows the direction of the Kaaba. It's the men's. Uh, restroom where they make wudu. As you can see, there are special seats to facilitate the making of wudu, and these are placed so that Muslims have no problem washing their feet. What we just witnessed is the Friday prayer of uh, Muslims. Uh, before the prayer, the Imam gave a small sermon in four languages, Arabic, Japanese, Turkish, and English, so that everybody in the audience could understand what the Imam was saying. After the sermon, we started praying uh, the two mandatory rakahs of Juma prayer. Everybody followed the Imam, who is the leader of the Muslim prayer. A raka consists of standing and going to prostration and after the prayer was over, everybody went downstairs to have a nice meal together. It's encouraged that after the prayer, free food is distributed to the people who came to pray so that they could uh, form a bond to create a sense of community. And it's also encouraged by the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give food to feed people when they're hungry. Uh, one of the nice things living in Japan as a Muslim is the fact that I personally get to experience the global communal feeling. Living in Japan is more like living in Mecca in the sense that in Mecca Muslims come together to experience not only the prayer and closeness to God but also the communal feeling, global communal feeling, uh, being together with uh, Muslims from all different countries. My name is Yogi. Uh, and you're from? Uh, I'm from Indonesia and I'm teaching here for about three years. This mosque is built by Indonesian uh, people in Japan. Okay. Actually, this mosque is built in the government area, but uh, people of Indonesia, they, uh, they uh, raise the fund for build this mosque. So if you can't find an Indonesian mosque, can you go to other mosques? Yeah, sure. Pakistani mosque or Indian people or a, a Turkey mosque is okay for us. Every mosque is different. This one just had to be fit into the available space, I think. That's why since we have to face Mecca, it was made diagonal like this. Standing just in this position, we are facing the city of Mecca. Mosques are not only meant to be uh, places of worship, but also places of study. So you can take any one of them and read here. Each mosque has a specific uh, purpose of putting uh, these boxes for donation. Some are put so that they can maintain the mosque. Uh, this one is meant for building more mosques in Japan. The money donated into this box will be given out to those people who are in need. So zakat in Islam is one of the five obligatory requirements. Uh, zakat means uh, those who reach a certain threshold in financial terms, they will be obligated to give one fortieth of their wealth uh, to those in need. 
So two and a half Every percent. year, yes. In uh, some parts of Japan where Muslims are not that many, there is usually uh, not a single mosque. In those cases, we just couldn't go to a mosque and pray at home or pray where, wherever we can pray when it's time to pray. My name is Xin Shen La and I'm from China. And I came to Japan around three years ago. And currently I work in a traditional trading company in Japan. One year after I came to Japan, I became a Muslim. So you can also call me Ismail, which is my religious name, which I like a lot. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Peace be on to you, everyone. My name is uh, Ahmed Maeno. Uh, my given name as Japanese, Naoki Maeno. I embraced Islam when I was at the age of 18. It's been 26 years now, so now you, you know my age. I've been working in Japanese oil and gas exploration company. And in my private time, voluntarily, I'm teaching outside uh, for adults and kids about Islam and so on. And here, in this center of Japan Muslim Association, I'm one of the five Imams. I think the first thing you have to pay attention to is you have to really know is Japanese culture. They know you are Muslim, they respect your culture, but you're just doing uh, your, the things that you like without any consideration of how other people will think and then they will cause some problems. It is a matter of uh, communication skill. So if you could explain beforehand that you are in need of, you know, praying or whatever, uh, they would allow you. Before I started working in that company, I, I talked with the CEO and he actually knows um, a lot about Muslim people in Japan because he used to work with Indonesians. Like he doesn't know much about the religion, but knows that we are different, we need to pray, we need to fast. So he had that knowledge. So he was more accepting. During the interview, they asked me about my religion and I directly told them on the spot that I'm a Muslim and that I needed a praying space in the company. So could you please provide a praying you know, area for me? And they said, okay, well, we'll think about that. And after discussion, they said, uh, it's okay. So like what I have now, I have a prayer room. Well, theoretically it's a prayer room, but it's just a... One of the meeting rooms. In vacant meeting rooms or in the corridors of the you know, st stairs. We Muslims can pray anywhere except the dirty places, so we can manage it. But challenging point was making ablution, because I didn't know uh, what to do when I was uh, in need of washing my foot. So I was just praying to God, oh, please, no one should come. Because if someone comes and see me washing my foot, it would be very strange looking and uh, they would surprise. What are you doing? <laughs> are you washing your foot here? Foot here? That was challenging. Uh, but after coming up with the idea of using the toilet papers as sponge, that made that thing a lot easier. How long does it take you to pray? Um, it takes less than 20 minutes each time. And if you want to do it, if you want to shorten the period of time, I think around 10 minutes you can close a prayer. Praying at the company, how many times a day would you have to do that? Uh, the first time is during the lunch break, definitely I pray. And if the, all the conditions are fine, we'll pray another time at around like 3 or 4 p.m. And it depends on the sunset time. So maybe there's a chance that I will do my third prayer at around 5 p.m. or something. It depends on the season. One of the things that I want to say is during the Ramadan is quite difficult and everybody's drinking and eating lunch, food, besides me while I'm the only one who doesn't drink at all, if you know what I mean, because it's for God, it's for Ramadan. And then they, they will ask why you are doing this, why you are doing that. In this period of time, I don't consume any food and water. Yes, it's kind of difficult, but um, as Muslim, we have strong faith in, you know, in our hearts, so actually, it is the difficulty that we experience that we will treasure the water and the resource of this planet more, I think. For lunchtime, I had to eat in the office with everybody. So the meal was provided by the company and they also considered my food restrictions. So they were always cooking the separate meal for me without pork and without alcohol, without different shortenings. Yeah, that was also very convenient for me. Some days, 
I was informed by the person who is in charge of meals. I cannot cook a special meal today, so can you bring your own? Then I, I will have to bring by myself. What I used to do is to uh, join the Nomikai without drinking any alcohol. And people around me will be like, no me, no me, which means drink this, drink this. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm a Muslim. And then they would be like, kyo dage no me yo. Like, just drink today. I was like, I'm sorry, don't do this to me. But I can enjoy, I feel happy if I, we share the time, we share the happiness together. But there's a bottom line, I don't drink. So please. But every time, like no matter how many times I try to extend this to them, they still ask me to drink so much. Until like one day I, th I thought, okay, this is overwhelming. I'm going to drop this. So I just don't go to any no mikai. It's a problem, actually. I definitely I will lose some chance of getting more connection and interaction with my co-workers. That's why I was, I tried to, I don't know, it's a problem actually. I'm thinking how should I get over with this? I'm stuck in this sense, I think. One of my personal uh, suffering that I met was this. So during Ramadan, I always wanted to have this on the top of my head as a religion, religious gesture. And this once I tried publicly and I got shouted by my boss. And he told me, it's okay if you can pray and you do all this religiously related stuff in that prayer room. Don't be like this publicly in the company. And I was like, okay, sure. So since there's a problem, so I have to drop this. In the trading company, I think your supplier will get so shocked because sometimes they just give you random visit. If you are in this status, I think the whole business meeting will be ruined. Often the case, Japanese, it's becoming different, but they tend to make clear difference between having faith in private places and public. They tend to see having faith is something private. I could just feel like, you know, I always feel like internet comments, right? <laughs> I've read so many of them. They'd be like, well, why would you come to Japan and then become a Muslim and then like create all these difficulties for yourself, right? I, I'm sorry, I have to correct you, it's not difficulty because like, I don't find it difficult. Your question is how I came to become a Muslim, right? People don't talk religiously in China. I felt empty inside, there's something wrong, like this emptiness made me to search more information. And finally, I got some chance to know and to learn about Islam. To be short, I think Islam is the correct path for me to follow. And at the same time, I feel so much peaceful inside. I think that's one of the reasons that I love, like Japan a lot, because it's totally religion free. I mean, they respect all the religions, so they are fine with that. Actually, there are two types of foreigners who work in Japan. One type is like me, I was trying, I'm trying so hard to understand how Japanese people think. And I adjust myself into that kind of, you know, stereotype. I, I was trying my best to, of course, I'm a Muslim, but I behave like a Japanese. That's how you gain their trust. But there are some, uh, there is another type of Muslims in Japan. They work in the company, but they are behaving like so foreigner. And uh, in my case, it's not, it's, it's not the case. So I was trying to follow my religion. At the same time, I was trying to immerse myself into the Japanese culture. So I think the first you respect Japanese culture, and then they will do the same things back to you. You really have to focus on your work. Once you have some good, like let's say positive performance in your job, for example, in trading company, if your sale reach the seasonal goal, they will think, okay, he's a Muslim. It doesn't matter because, you know, we reach our goal. So this is a way, finish your task professionally to gain the trust and respect, even you are a Muslim. Just don't, you know, screw up with your work. Fundamental rules, right? I have felt that people uh, treated me differently, not because I'm a Muslim, just because of the fact that I'm a foreigner. Just in cases where I have to pray outside, people who are passing by would uh, give a very surprised look because they wouldn't have a clue as to what we are doing because they wouldn't uh, know the Muslim prayer. That could uh, be the reaction, but other than that, there is no discrimination I have faced. Yeah, in general, Japanese people always try to be 
like polite and considerate. Current situation is a lot different and uh, e easier and better okay. for the sake of Muslims, because uh, the society is welcoming, uh, you know, welcoming the thoughts of diversities and uh, you know. Some Japanese people are trying to accommodate Muslim needs by uh, providing truck mosques, trucks that could expand uh, into uh, a room and become uh, a place of worship. It might be a particular different challenge since I am Muslim from Japan and when I compare that with the Muslims from outside of Japan. Why? You know, there are double standard treatment. When they treat with Japanese it is one thing and when they treat with others, let's say foreigners, it's another thing. So, for example, uh, at the times of diffusing drinking alcohol, if I was from outside of Japan, they would accept it easily. Oh, because you're not, you know, you're coming from outside, we respect you. But since they, you know, they know that I, I, I do look like Japanese, so they, they know me Japanese, and then, the, you know, two decades before, they were likely to ask me, um, aren't you Japanese? So in public, uh, I don't really get uh, strange stares or people reacting in some way to my hijab in Japan. I think because of uh, the nature of Japanese people, they usually don't stare at people. They don't want to put them in an uncomfortable <laughs> state. So I never faced any uh, difficulty or inconvenience, now they're getting used to it. But it's not the same with other parts of Japan. In countryside areas, there are many people who would be surprised and cannot hide their surprise. And in my workplace, for example, also, I used to get asked questions like, why do I wear it? And sometimes even strange questions like, do I go into shower with it or do I sleep with it? One day my co-workers were asking me, can I take off my hijab just once? They were like very close to me and I don't know, for me it was a bit awkward. I also understand them, they don't fully understand Islam and why we do certain things and why it's important to us and how important it is for us. So in Islam, it's obligatory to wear hijab and women in Islam are supposed to cover their hair and parts of their body and dress modestly. So I try to do that. That helps me to feel close to God and have feel the connection because in this world, in this mo modern days, it's very easy to be distracted with many other things and forget about re your religion, your main priorities in life. I wear hijab when I'm in public and when I'm with people who are outside of my family. For example, if it's my father or mother, my brother, siblings, my husband, I can be without hijab and it's yeah, completely fine. But when I go out or when I'm around with other people, I wear hijab. One important thing that I forgot is uh, with females, it's totally fine. Yeah. Don't be afraid and be relaxed and enjoy <laughs> because it's a lot easier than you might be expecting. Thank God that, at least not yet, we don't have a Islamophobia here in this society. So no one would throw you any stones or whatever uh, <laughs> when you come here or when you walk. On the contrary, uh, even from the government side, they do welcome a lot <laughs> the you know, the, the guests from outside. Japan now is very welcome to Muslim, uh, so don't worry to come to Japan. What most Muslims should know about life in Japan and living in Japan as a Muslim is that it's extremely uh, comfortable to live as a Muslim, even more so than uh, many Muslim countries. The reason I say that is because I don't see any restrictions uh, on practicing my religion. Living in Japan as a Muslim, we have mosques, uh, we have halal food, and there is a large Muslim community, actually, we can hang out with, we can talk to. So 
I think we feel quite comfortable living in Japan as a Muslim. Nobody cares if you wear a hijab, nobody cares if you pray, as long as you don't mess up, you don't screw anything, as long as you are following and obeying the same rules as the Japanese society, there is more freedom. And one of the reasons why I personally feel comfortable living in Japan is our Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, he himself said, the reason I was sent to this world is to perfect traits of character. So he meant, uh, my aim is not to make people pray or do this or do that. The purpose of this religion is to make people beautify themselves through beautifying their character. And just like a person can have certain set of vices and virtues, society as a whole can have vices and virtues. So I find a lot of virtues that are commended in Islam in the Japanese society. That's why it feels to me, living in Japan, Japan is more Islamic than mo many Muslim countries. And what you know? I got another email from Barno. And so what happened is I sent her and Shirzad a draft of the video because it's a subject I know virtually nothing about, and I wanted to make sure that I presented it correctly. Not edit it for like bad things or anything like that, or censor stuff, just make sure I didn't uh, put some terms down that were incorrect. Um, but anyways, she had this to say. We feel like we were a bit remiss in showing or expressing how thankful we are to Japan and the Japanese people in general for their largely welcoming and respectful attitude towards Muslims. If you could add a sentence in your own words in the conclusion of your video telling your audience how grateful we are to Japan and the Japanese people, we would appreciate it. Well, consider it done. You did it yourself. Do you think it's fine to talk about uh, my YouTube channel in which I... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just check out her channel and you'll know how much her and Shazad really love Japan. Oh, you're here? <laughs> I, I lost you. Oh, okay. So, should I walk pretending that I'm not seeing you? Okay. 